Most of the non-Arab world was still expressing shock today over the Munich massacre. Even Jordan, for the second day straight, denounced the action, saying, quote, it was an ugly crime which has served to destroy the Arab cause. In Israel, Prime Minister Golda Meir expressed her government's appreciation for West Germany's action in trying to free the Israeli victims. Even so, in Tel Aviv, there were protest demonstrations outside the West German embassy. Associated Press reported late today that Israel has asked the United States to withdraw from the remainder of the Olympics in protest against the decision to continue the competition. There was no immediate word of response. One of the victims of the Munich attack was David Berger, a native of Cleveland, Ohio, who was a member of the Israeli weightlifting team. We have a report from Bill Baker of WEWS-TV, Cleveland. Flags in Cleveland and the entire state of Ohio were ordered to half-staff in honor of 28-year-old David Berger. The Jewish athlete grew up in the affluent Cleveland suburb of Shaker Heights. He moved to Israel three years ago, according to his parents, in order to find the reality of life. David had dual citizenship. His boyhood room is filled with trophies and mementos of his weightlifting skill. David's father, Dr. Benjamin Berger, met briefly with reporters after an all-night vigil of television reports and overseas phone calls that eventually brought the news of his son's fate. After a great deal of soul-searching, Dr. Berger held the German government responsible for not adequately protecting the athletes. I think the initial security in the village was poor. Uh, they didn't supply the security necessary, and I think that the... It's Israelis depended in large part on the German government for their own security. It certainly was an error. Dr. Berger does not believe in an eye for an eye and does not wish for more violence. I think what I really hope is that the Israeli government doesn't take specific actions. Uh, I feel that anybody needlessly killed in any type of war is crime. And I see nothing gained by the Israeli government assuming reprisals against Lebanon or Syria or Egypt. I think nothing, absolutely nothing would come of that. Dr. Berger feels the Olympic Games must continue so the disruptive goals of the Arab guerrillas are not achieved. For ABC News, this is Bill Baker in Shaker Heights, Ohio. A final note from Munich. Last week, American Rick DeMont won the gold medal in the 400-meter freestyle swimming event. Today, the International Olympic Committee took the medal away. DeMont, who has asthma, was disqualified for taking ephedrine, an asthma medication which is on the list of drugs banned by the Olympic Committee. In the U.S., President Nixon today ordered tighter security for Israeli citizens in this country and for others who might be the targets of Arab terrorists. The White House refused to discuss what specific measures will be taken, but the executive machinery is already in operation. ABC diplomatic correspondent Ted Koppel reports. The administration's eagerness to demonstrate decisive reaction took a variety of forms. A uniformed subsidiary of the Secret Service was instructed to strengthen security measures around the Israeli, West German, and several Arab diplomatic missions. But the United States is still struggling with a much more complex question of how to translate diplomatic outrage into effective international action. By coincidence, the International Civil Aviation Organization is meeting at the State Department this week. They're dealing strictly with the question of hijacking, but for Secretary of State Rogers, it was a convenient forum to react to the Munich incident. It seems almost uh, beyond our comprehension that action can't be taken to stop these acts. The government of the United States is prepared to take the most firm, severe action that the international community is prepared to join in. At the Israeli embassy here in Washington, visitors signed a memorial guest book, while upstairs, just before a late afternoon meeting with Secretary Rogers, Ambassador Yitzhak Rabin stressed the need for immediate international action. I believe that there are enough free democratic countries that can find effective means to bring home to those individuals, to those organizations, to those countries that still offer freedom of action to these insane terrorists and to make it clear to them in practical terms that unless they do something, 
they are going to suffer. If the Israelis, the alternatives are limited. If they are to refrain from reprisal, they must be reasonably confident that their restraint won't be interpreted as a sign of weakness. And unless the rest of the world is willing to back its rhetoric with action, the Israelis will be left to their own devices again. This is Ted Koppel, ABC News, outside the Israeli embassy. I'll have more news in a moment.